はい。Friends, today we are going to discuss about the screw friction. As we all know about the screws, bolts, studs, nuts are widely used in various machines and structures for the temporary fastenings. For temporary fastenings. So these fastenings have screw threads so which are made by cutting a continuous helical groove on a cylindrical surface either uh, externally or internally. So if the threads are cut on the outer surface of a solid rod, so these are called the external threads or well, if the threads are cut on the internal surface, external on a solid rod, if the threads are cut, then it is called the external threads and if these threads are cut internally inside the hollow shaft, hollow rod, so then these are known as the uh, internal threads. The screw threads are mainly of two types, so V threads and square threads. So generally these V threads, you can see here, so V threads. So V threads are stronger and also it will offer the more resistance frictional resistance to motion than the square threads. V threads have an advantage of uh, preventing the nut from slackening. So it will prevent the nut from the slackening. In general the V threads it will be used for the purpose of uh, tightening pieces together. Uh, you can see the nut and bolts for the fastening. You can use the V threads to tighten the pieces together. But the square threads will be used in screw jacks and vice screws. Uh, you can observe that in bench vices, in the workshop. And next for the power transmission also you may use the square threads. So these are the important terms that you need to learn. So you can call it as the nomenclature of the screw thread. Okay, so before going there, first of all, uh, let us know about what are the different uh, screw thread forms. Okay, so we have the V thread. So the yeah, angle between the those two will be the 60 and American national it is also 60 but it differs with the pitch and next unified external and metric threads square threads you can observe here the square threads and ACME so general purpose and Whitworth standard knuckle and buttresses. So these are the different forms of thread that you may go through you may use so but we are going to learn about the square threads now. So before going that. So what will be the nomenclature of these uh, threads? So first of all, the helix. So it is a curve traced by a particle while describing a circular path at a uniform speed so that it is, it is going to advance in an axial direction. <coughs> when it is uh, internal, when this bolt is there, nut and bolt is there. So in this one, when the nut is going to uh, move along the axial, Okay, so whatever the curve that will be traced by that particle, so while describing a circular path with a uniform speed, so then it is called the helix. In other words, it is the curve traced by a particle while moving along a screw thread. So it is the curve traced by a particle along, moving along the screw thread. So here coming the pitch. So pitch will be the distance from a point of a screw to a corresponding point of the next thread. So measured parallel to the axis of the screw. You can see here the pitch, so the pitch between this one to this one it is called the pitch. So you can see here, so this will be the root and this is the crest, crest and root. So here you will have the thread angle, so the thread angle you can measure it as the 2 alpha and the camphor, so that is 45 degrees. So now the pitch, so pitch will be in between these two. So pitch is the distance from a point of a screw, from a point of a screw to the corresponding point on the next thread. Measure, measure parallel to the axis of the screw. So this will be measured parallel to the axis of the screw. And lead. So lead is the distance a screw thread advances axially in one turn. So in one turn, so how much of 
distance the screw thread is going to cover in one turn. So that is called the lead and depth of thread. So it is the distance between the top and bottom surfaces of a thread. You can observe here. So depth of thread. So this is the crest and this is the root. It is the distance between the top and the bottom surfaces of a thread and also known as the crest and root of a thread. So this is the depth. So depth of the screw thread. And now coming to the single threaded screw. So it is the lead of a screw which is equal to its pitch. So it is the lead of a screw that will be equal to its pitch and it is also known as the single th threaded screw. And so generally uh, if you take only this extent, so this is the single threaded screw. So but another concept is that that is a multi threaded screw. So if more than one thread is cut in one lead distance of a screw, so then it is known as the multi threaded screw. So within the leaded distance. So we have if we have the more than one thread, so then it is called the multi threaded screw. So you can observe that in a double threaded screw, two threads are cut in one lead length. In such cases, all the threads run independently along the length of the rod. So mathematically, you can write it as so generally uh, lead 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 equal to pitch. So whatever the pitch is there, so this pitch into number of threads, number of threads. So helix angle, so helix angle uh, you can call it as, uh, it is the slope or inclination of a thread with the horizontal, so it is a slope or inclination of the thread. or incline of the thread with the horizontal. So mathematically you can write it as, so this is tan alpha equal to lead of screw by circumference, circumference of screw, lead of the screw by circumference of the screw. So that means we know the lead as lead as how much of lead it is equal to the pitch. So if it is a single threaded for the single threaded, so it will be equal to one pitch by the circumference is pi d. And if you take the multi threaded then will be n into p by pi d okay so where alpha will be the helix angle and p will be the pitch of the screw p will be the pitch of the screw d will be the mean diameter of the screw alpha will be the helix angle and d will be the mean diameter of the screw and n will be the number of threads. So this d is mean diameter of the screw, mean dia of the screw. Now coming to the screw jack, Coming to the screw jack, screw jack is a device for lifting heavy loads by applying a comparatively smaller effort by taking its angle. So the main principle of the screw jack works similar to that of an inclined plane. So you can observe here, so it will show the common form of uh, the screw jack which consists of square threads here, square threaded rod is there and which fits in a <coughs> into the internal threads of a nut, the load to be raised. 
So here the load to be raised or lowered. So this will be placed on the head of the square threaded rod. So which is rotated by the application of now. If one complete ton of a screw thread by imagine to be unwound. So from the body of screw undeveloped. So generally it will be reflecting the directly inclined plane. So here you can observe. So this is the development of a screw and the forces that will be acting on the screw. So let, so P will be the pitch of this uh, screw, D will be the mean diameter of the screw, alpha will be the helix angle, so this alpha will be the helix angle and P will be the effort that will be required uh, at the circumference of the screw to lift the load and next W will be the load that to be lifted and mu will be the coefficient of friction. So now from this geometry, the main principle on which a screw jack it will work it is similar to that of an inclined plane so, so as the principle on which a screw jack works it will be similar to that of an inclined plane so we can force applied on the lever of the screw jack it will be considered to be horizontal you can take uh, this as example and from this one, so this will be the alpha, this is alpha and P and D, ID. So you can write it as, so whatever the load that is being lifted, therefore the forces of friction, so you can write it as the force of friction will be the F equal to mu into Rn. So it will act downwards, the force of friction, it will act downwards and all the forces on the screw acting on that screw so you can resolve that here normally action will act in the upward and the weight will act in the downward so you can resolve that okay so this w it is inclined at alpha with respect to this and next w sine alpha and w cos alpha so this result now resolving the forces along the plane resolving the forces along the plane so here p cos alpha so p cos alpha will be equal to the w sin alpha plus the frictional force f so that i am going to write p cos alpha will be equal to w sin alpha so it will be resisted by the frictional force f and also w sin alpha plus f so you can write it as w sin alpha plus mu into rn so as we know that frictional force f equal to mu into normal reaction rn so now the resolving the forces perpendicular to the plane now horizontal to the plane we had resolved and now resolving forces perpendicular to plane so here whatever the forces that are acting perpendicularly it will be the rn so this is rn so rn will be equal to it will be balanced by p sin alpha so this one and next w cos alpha plus w cos alpha
So here the perpendicular forces will be Rn equal to P sin alpha plus W cos alpha. So now substituting the value of Rn in this equation 1. So you can write it as P cos alpha equal to W sin alpha plus mu into Rn. So in place of Rn we are going to substitute P sin alpha plus W cos alpha. So from this you can write it as W sin alpha plus mu into P sin alpha plus mu into W cos alpha. So from this W sin alpha plus mu into P sin alpha plus mu into W cos alpha. So you can write it down. There. Now from this so divide that P cos alpha should be shifted to the left hand side. So that is P cos alpha minus mu into P sin alpha equal to W sin alpha plus mu into W cos alpha. From this you can write it down. So you can take the common P. So P into cos alpha minus mu into sin alpha equal to you can take it out W as common sin alpha plus mu into cos alpha. So from this load P equal to W into sin alpha plus mu into cos alpha by cos alpha minus mu into sin alpha. So we know the value we know the value sorry we know that mu will be equal to tan phi we are going to substitute that in the equation so p equal to w into sin alpha plus mu into cos alpha by cos alpha minus mu into sin alpha. From this you can write here, you can substitute in place of mu equal to tan phi, then you can write w into sin alpha plus tan phi into cos alpha divided by cos alpha minus tan phi into sin alpha. So we know that tan phi will be equal to sin phi by cos phi. So you can substitute that in that equation w into sin alpha into cos phi plus sin phi into cos alpha by cos phi divided by cos alpha cos phi minus sin phi sin alpha by cos phi. So you can cancel cos phi. Then you can write it down as W into sin alpha cos phi plus sin phi cos alpha divided by cos alpha cos phi minus sin phi sin alpha. 
we know it as W into sin alpha cos phi plus sin phi cos alpha. It will be written as sin of alpha plus phi by cos alpha cos phi minus sin phi sin alpha. It can be written as cos of alpha plus phi. So we know that as P will be equal to W into tan of alpha plus phi. So this is the torque required to overcome the friction. So how much of torque you are going to apply to overcome the friction? So how much of torque you are going to apply at the lever? You can write it down as torque required. So P T1 equal to P into D by 2. So this is the force that will be required, magnitude of the force that will be required to lift. And the torque required to overcome the friction between the screw and the nut will be P1 equal to P into D by 2. So you can write it down as W tan of alpha plus phi into D by 2. So here when the axial load is taken up by a thrust collar over a flat surface, so the load does not rotate with the screw. So then the torque required to overcome the friction at the collar, you can write it down as T2, it will be as T2 that will be equal to mu1 W into R1 plus R2 by 2. This is mean you can take it as mu1 W into R where R1 and R2 will be the outside and inside diameter of the sorry outside and inside radii of the collar and R will be the mean radius of the collar and mu1 will be the coefficient of friction for the collar okay. Now the total torque that will be required so total torque required to overcome friction or to rotate the screw. So that will be as T equal to T1 plus T2. Then that will be P into D by 2 plus. So T2 will be mu1 W into R. Okay. And now if an effort P1 is applied at the end of the lever, so suppose consider this as the lever. So if P1 will be the effort that will be applied at the end of the lever, so at this end of the lever of arm length L, so you are going to take this arm length L, then the torque required to overcome the friction must be equal to the torque applied to the end of the lever okay so for that p equal to p into d by 2 so that will be equal to p1 into l when the nominal diameter so d naught and the core diameter dc of the screw thread is given so then the mean diameter you can write it as d equal to d naught plus dc by d naught plus dc by 2 or uh, from this you can write it as d naught minus p by 2 or dc plus p by 2 you can substitute here so you can get these equations since the mechanical advantage is the ratio of the load lifted so that is the w load how much of load it is lifted to the effort applied so p will be the effort applied at the end of the lever therefore the mechanical advantage so mechanical advantage you can write it as w by p1 so that is W 
into 2L by P into D. So as we know that P1 equal to P into D by 2L. So here you can write it as W into 2L by, so P we know that W into tan alpha plus phi into D. Okay, so you can, uh, W will get cancelled uh, in this one. Then you can write it down as, that will be equal to, so 2L by D into tan of alpha plus phi. So that is the mechanical advantage. So this is all about uh, the screw jack or the torque required to lift the load by a screw jack. Concept of torque required to lift the load by a screw jack.